Okay, so I wanted to do a quick video on the prices of parts, especially for 912s. Um, but also part um, prices of cars and not trends, not how much they're going for, not even what you should pay for them. If it's a 996 like this, you should pay this. If it's a 912 like blah, 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 you should pay that. None of that. It's more to do with what it means to you specifically as a, a buyer or someone who's in the market for a new car. <clears throat> but let's concentrate on, on parts first. So I've been looking for lots of parts for my 912. Now, the funny thing about that is that so I've gone and looked and I thought and I've thought oh my god these parts are so astronomically expensive how am I ever going to afford to get my car going and, and get it complete um, and I've been looking over a number of weeks I mean probably six weeks so I needed some rear seats and when you look you'll see things like some rear seats that are kind of in pretty rough condition and they are um, they need reupholstering and they're 250 pounds to 300 pounds um, and they're on eBay so that's where they're likely to be um, or on a forum or somewhere like that forum less so because on a forum those guys know more what they're talking about but whereas on things like eBay you're more likely to have somebody who's chancing their arm. So when I see these, and they're hundreds and hundreds of pounds, I'm thinking, should I buy them? Now, if I was in my mindset of buying a car, and I thought, do you know what? It doesn't matter how much it might be uh, in relation to anything else, but is it a thing that, I, is it a car that I want? Is it a car that I can afford, afford and does it meet my minimum criteria? If it does, yes, I'll buy that. Uh, because I'm all about instant gratification, I want that. But when it comes to parts, I look at it and I go, that can't be right. Those back seats are tiny. So I think, well, you know, I'll wait. I'm in no rush on that because I've already got the car. I'm not driving it. No one's gonna sit in the back, but I do want it to be complete. So time goes by and I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And then suddenly someone's selling some that are in a really rough state, that need reupholstering, but nothing new there, but they're 49 pounds, or best offer, and they're not selling. So I contact the guy, he sells them to me, brilliant, they arrive, I stick them in the car, I haven't upholstered them, I stick them in the car because I've got nowhere to keep them basically, uh, so for space, and they slot in nicely, and so what I think is I, I start watching certain things that I want, and I just start looking at the prices and I think, hmm, really? And they're not selling. Those things are on there for weeks and weeks and weeks and they're things like, um, so I wanted the rubber spring that goes under the butterfly horn on my 912. And I thought, well, should I really get a second hand one? But I'll look, there might be a new one on eBay. So there's one on eBay for 28 pounds. And I think, whoa, for a piece of rubber. Then I go and look on Design 911 and it's eight pounds, brand new. So it makes me think, hang on, the pricing is inflated and all you've got to do is wait for somebody to put something online uh, on eBay on an auction and you'll get it for less than half price. So mirrors, the Durant mirrors, the round door mirrors for a 912, I need one because mine's got a, a square one on. <clears throat> so I look at them and they are, um, they're 100 pounds each and I think oh 100 pounds each and they're on eBay they're everywhere and then suddenly I see one on auction that sells for 45 pounds and I think oh and the next day I see two for sale on an auction and I buy them both of them brand new for 86 pounds including delivery and then you think hang on hang on I just need to be smart about this <clears throat> So that's where the pricing is inflated. You have to really look and don't go straight to eBay. Look for a new part first because eBay, you might get something scraggy, massively overinflated in price with a ton of postage costs because it'll be coming from Europe or it'll be coming from the US. Look for something in the UK, look for something on auction to get a true idea 
um, of what it might be worth. See if you can find something that's already sold on uh, a similar type thing on eBay that's already sold via auction. And then back to um, prices for cars. It's a different ethos for that, certainly for me, because when I look to buy something, although I'll, I'll look and I'll think how much a thing's going for, and then you'll go, okay, I'll work out a budget based on what I think they're going for. And then from that stage to actually buying a car, it's fairly quick if the, if the car that you want becomes available, because you don't think, well, actually, it's going for 45,000, um, and 45 is quite cheap now, I guess. But it's going for 45,000. I know I'll try and buy it for 30. That's not how you do it. You look at it and go, what's it worth to me? And look at, go and listen to the Porsche Cooled podcast with Greg, I think, in the US. And he, he, he said it exactly how I think about it. It is, if you go and see a car and it's for 65,000 pounds and you know in your mind, hang on, that's actually worth about 55 if I look at all the other ones available like it. Um, just going off at 55 or offer 53 knowing that you'll meet at 55 and that way you've not conned that person you've not lowballed them you've not cheated them you've not insulted them you and what you've done is you've gone through your really quick checklist this is the mileage that i want this is the history that i want this is the spec that i want oh it's got all of those it's in the ballpark of what i want to pay for it i'll go and get that one otherwise you'll look and you'll look and all the good ones that come up they just disappear really quickly um, but then on the other side, uh, extreme of that conversation is if you're buying uh, a 912, the variance in, in prices is huge. And you, what you've got to do is get that checklist right. So if you say, well, actually, I want something that's had a non-bolt restoration, you go, well, actually, this is the ballpark that I'm looking at. But if you go, well, actually, my criteria is a bit more flexible. I want something that's rust-free and that I can drive and not be completely overcome with anxiety that I'm, it's gonna get scratched and I'll lose 10,000 pounds. No, you think, actually, I'd be quite happy, it's raining outside, to jump in and go for a drive. And in which case you think, hmm, I'm willing to pay, I don't know, 25,000, not 25, that you're never gonna get one for 25, 35,000. So you see something and you go, it's got a bit of surface rust, it's a bit, patinated but structurally solid it's MOT'd always a huge bonus and it drives really nice and it's got a nice interior and you just think you know what that's what I want and I'm not going to lose any money so I've paid the amount that it's worth to me it's met my criteria really short criteria tick 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 and just looking at it looking at the ad and I think okay that falls into my criteria all I've got to do is go and see that what the ad says is true and it's still in my criteria make an offer of what I think it's worth not I'm trying to get a bargain um, and then you can very quickly gauge well actually do I, does my budget needs change and then suddenly you're driving a car that you've always wanted and I think that's the thing it's it's about getting in that car and driving it really quickly if you're thinking well I should buy one now because I'm gonna make lots of money then that's a completely different way of looking at it. You're, look, you're looking to invest and you're gonna be somebody who probably knows exactly what you're looking for, knows exactly the price that you're gonna pay. Uh, whereas I would be more about, much like driving this car right now, thinking I just want something that I can drive. Um, and I think that's the way to look at it. So if you're going, I'm gonna buy something. And, and again, you look at, you know, there's things that you take into consideration. You think about, uh, do I do I believe everything the owner's telling me? How long have they had it? Um, what have I looked at? Can I get underneath the car? All that kind of stuff. Do I need to bring somebody? I'm not that kind of person, but that's the kind of stuff that I've learned. Um, that these are the things that can get you into a car um, really quickly with the minimum amount of delay and risk. That's really important, the risk. You're trying to de-risk it. So, uh, and the risk being that you're gonna buy something and it's a, a heap of rust and everything's been covered up and it doesn't really work properly and uh, you're gonna spend a really long time trying to fix it up and that's essentially what I'm doing. Uh, although my car is kind of, um, 
I kind of knew what I was getting into, sort of, kind of, maybe. Um, and the the thing about you know it might have some rust, uh, but structurally it's solid. It's not dangerous. Jack's checked it over. I've had somebody else check it over as well, and they said, they've said, you know what, just keep it dry, and it's not going to get any worse, and it'll be fine. But it's such a mishmash. I've been on the uh, 912 BBS forum. I think it's a US forum, but so many knowledgeable people on there. And um, I, I have had a problem with the lights. You've probably seen on Instagram where the front lights, all three of them flash. So there's a bulb for the indicator, which is the first one. This is the passenger, no, driver's side on that side for a left-hand drive car. So the first one is the indicator, there's a side light thing and then, there's, and then there's a brake light type bulb in the middle with two elements in it. So when you turn the side lights on, the middle low element comes on of that brake light type bulb. And then you put the indicator on and, or, and the second element flashes along with the two other bulbs. And I thought, what's going on? So I got all this advice and then suddenly someone, and I need to get back to him actually, uh, on the forum and the same person on Instagram said, oh, your car must be a 1969 because it's got those uh, uh, wings, fenders and the, the grill. And then I started doing a bit more research and then someone else on the forum said, oh yeah, I, I wasn't sure what type of car it was until I posted the video. Um, so that's how knowledgeable they are. They, they weren't sure what light I had because my car's a bit of a mishmash. They all thought by the year that I told them I was looking at something, but it's actually something else. So anyway, the crux of the matter is um, it's got the wrong lights on it. It's got three bulbs in the light cluster and it should only have two, which is why it works like that. So the wiring is actually fine. There's no problem with the fuses. Um, it's actually the wrong light. And again, with the prices, if I went and looked at a second hand on eBay, light cluster thing, really crusty mangled ones are 150 pounds. That's without a lens. Um, so my lenses are all cracked and faded. And, um, and if I bought new ones, which you can get from Design 911, they're 250 pounds each. So imagine that indicator side light cluster for the front. It's a bunch of plastic and it's 250 pounds each. I need a really clever 3D printer to print them out myself. Um, so I'm not gonna buy them and I'm gonna stop worrying about it. I'm gonna put the lens covers back on and do you know what? When I'm driving and I put the side light on, there's a light on. When I indicate three bulbs indicate, it's like you could not get more indication. Uh, anyone listening in the US, obviously it's turn signal, same thing. Um, so yeah, there's, I'm, I'm learning so much as I go along just about how to procure parts um, and what the pitfalls are and then with the pricing of cars. Because the other thing I looked at was, well, now that I know somebody who does fabrication, I know somebody who does the mechanical stuff, obviously I've got no space anywhere, but what if I did buy one of those? I posted on Instagram, there was one for sale for eight and a half thousand pounds, you know, completely in bits. Um, but even if you just put it together and started the engine, you would, you would double that money. Um, but then when I looked, there were, there weren't any available. So, oh well. Um, so anyway, what I've done is, so things like, uh, as another example, my window regulator for the driver's side, the, the splined bit where the winder goes on has snapped off. And they're hundreds of pounds, second hand or new, they're like two to 300 to 400 pounds. So what I did was I thought there must be a VW part compatible. So I bought a, a Beetle window regulator, second hand one for £9.99. And it's got the same spindle bit, but it doesn't take the screw. Now I can modify that, that's fine. But someone running along the road with a camera, um, I can modify that, but I'd have to undo the 
the rivets and take the the cog off and put it onto the regulator for the Porsche. And I don't know where to get those rivets from, how strong they'll be, but I'm gonna give it a go and see what happens. Cause I don't wanna be spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Something's just fallen out from the sun visor. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna work that out. Uh, but these are the kind of things that you have to think about uh, because otherwise they're just money pits and I don't want it to, oh, it's a bit of clear road. Should we give it a go? Ready? So I don't drive this car, like I said in our last video, I've done 1,700 miles in a year. I know it's been locked down, two lockdowns, uh, pandemic. So yes, that is the main reason. But um, I still really enjoy driving it. And I'm so glad it's got the MOT. But anyway, I didn't say again at the beginning, please subscribe. Um, I love hearing from people who, who are on a similar journey, uh, whether they're looking for a car, whether they've just bought one, whether they're importing one, whether they're restoring one. Um, and I think there's just stuff that I'm picking up just for, it's almost like, um, I don't know, not learning a language, but learning to cut through a lot of the stuff that you see about Porsches and there's a, there's definitely a, Porsche Premium that everyone talks about and a lot of the times there's an alternative available for what you're trying to do um, and I feel like there's not enough out there about what the alternatives are I'm still looking for steel wheels and I've read somewhere that the bolt pattern is very particular on a 912 or a 911 of that era um, but 924 or 944 spare wheels are of the same spec and so I can get those. Um, but again, people are selling them an individual wheel with a crusty old tire for 150 pounds. And you know they're not worth that much because nobody's buying them. They're on there for weeks and weeks and weeks and they rely on somebody desperate who thinks, I need that right now, or I really want that part. That must be the going rate, I'll buy it. So what I'm looking for is now an alternative steel wheel that's going to fit that bolt pattern. So that's my next mission. Uh, admittedly, it's not urgent because the car is on some perfectly nice Fuchs wheels with great tires. Um, I just need some centers for those. Um, but watch this space for the um, steel wheels. Uh, unless somebody knows the steel wheels that I will be able to um, fit on there. So I'm thinking of, um, I need to work out what the bolt pattern is. I think I know what it is, but I won't say just now because it might just sound silly if it's wrong. Um, and then I'm going to find another bolt pattern, some VW uh, equivalent or something, or I think there's some Mercedes equivalents that you can get. You know the ones with the, um, like people used to put on their Mark 1 Scirocco's and Mark 1 Golf's slightly larger for those cars anyway. Um, steel wheels. So I'm looking at stuff like that and I'm hoping that I'll, I'll have those very soon. It is really narrow down here. So I'm going to, once I've got those, I will mention that in the next video. And in the meantime, I haven't had the welding done. Um, and I just need to put those lights back on and not worry about the lights anymore until I see Bargainous um, light clusters for the front. In the meantime, I'm just gonna leave it because it's not dangerous. It's not ideal, but it's not dangerous and it's not going for an MOT anytime soon because I'm not going to be driving it very often. The roads have been salted, uh, but I'm sure there'll be a downpour at some point. The weather will improve, the roads will dry out, and I'll be able to take it out. 
because I still need to fettle the timing, which I've not done. Um, so, and the clock doesn't work. I do want to fix that as well. But the main thing I need to do is just, yeah, just get it together. Do I want to spend the 315 pounds to get the um, upholstery kits for the back seats and do that myself? It's not really urgent and I don't really want to be spending the money. It's near Christmas. It's that kind of thing. Let's accelerate uphill. Ooh, almost on the limiter. I hate it when it hits the limiter. It's just like, it's very jarring. Um, I think that I think that's it. That that's all I wanted to say, uh, just about the price. I'm, I'm going to do a more thorough thing about the pricing of parts and of things, um, and of what a price should mean to you if you're looking to buy a car. And you've been, if you've been looking a really long time, I think you need to re refine your criteria. That's my humble opinion. I don't know everything. I don't. In fact, I don't know many things. Uh, but I think if your criteria is fairly, um, not black and white, but fairly strict, and you just instantly go, that meets my criteria, I'll go and look at it. Is it, um, is it a faithful representation of what the description says? Yes. Is it anywhere near my budget? Yes. Do I think it, it's value for money based on uh, your budget, the market, and what it's advertised at? Uh, and then make an offer. And if you think, well, that sounds like a low ball, just make an offer and walk away. Um, and, and that's it. Because most of the time, it's, it's what you're doing is, you're not saying, hey, I want you to sell me your car really cheaply. You're saying, well, actually, it's been advertised for a really long time. And if, something's, if you think something's priced really competitively, just go and get it. Because uh, otherwise, you'll just be saying a week later, two days later, I missed out on a potential, um, not bargain, but I could have been driving that car. So that's it. That really is it now. Um, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and let me know what kind of things you're doing, uh, especially when it comes to buying. And if you know any secret tricks, not secret tricks, if you know some secret on how to get reasonably priced parts for 912s because at the moment it just looks like everything's massively overpriced you know someone in europe said to me oh i've got uh, some steel wheels for you they need refurbishing and uh, they've got no tires on them um, and they might need to be banded to get them to the right width offset uh, i want 900 pounds for four not even five and then you're there going, hello? Would I even get that for my Fuchs wheels that are in really decent nick with really good tires on? Uh, I don't know, probably not. They advertise for lots of money, so when someone says what, they, what are they worth, and I always think, well, I've seen stuff advertised 1,500 pounds, but it's still advertised because no one's buying them. Why am I still rambling on? Um, that's really it now. Thank you for watching, and um, and thank you for everybody who's reaching out and sharing their stories. Um, it's really helping and people who have given me pointers and uh, suggestions, please keep doing that because I need it. I don't know what I'm doing. And anything you suggest, I will look into it and I will try and make it happen. Uh, because if it's saving me effort, if it's saving me <clears throat> hardship, if it's saving me money um, and time, then brilliant i'm all for it because there's lots of people on instagram and youtube who've got these cars and they know tons about them and they know all the clever ways to keep them on the road to keep them rust free to keep them working to fix them uh and i'm all ears anyway thank you